Hello, everybody. We are covering the topic of design for quality and what designers need to know when working on a new product. I'm Renaud Angeran, and I'm joined by Andrew Armenovin. So, Andrew, tell us, what is design for quality? Hi, hey, Renaud. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, yeah, design for quality is uh, one of the most important topics in design and development is where you are trying to keep in mind all the quality aspects of uh, design as you, you know, doing the development. Uh, and that includes, for example, tolerance analysis, uh, making sure you have uh, 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 pass fail criteria for uh, all of your uh, uh, basically design related, uh, you know, uh, specifications or testing related uh, items. You want to make sure that you have uh, uh, some kind of criteria for inspection when it comes to design for quality and so on. Yep. So let's let's go through some topics, some important topics, um, one by one. So, and the first one that uh, designers need to keep in mind is what actually does the customer want or what will they value uh, but also you know a little bit wider what how will they use it what actually is the most important to them right and then this is the basis to then be translated into requirements and specifications right correct uh, voice of a customer really is the actual uh, requirement uh, for the customer but also the end user of that customer and most often uh, designers have tunnel vision they just sit down and they actually do their design and they forget about how the product is going to be used uh, in the field and this is very important topic right the next one is to go with standard off the shelf parts rather than uh, designing custom parts for everything and simplify, simplify, simplify the product wherever possible. Why is this important? Well, nowadays, uh, a lot of uh, components and parts have been standardized. Technology has been improved to a point that a lot of these parts do not require testing, evaluation, and approval anymore. So you save a lot of time and a lot of money because these parts are readily available in the marketplace. And you can just you just need to take some samples, test them in your design. And if they work, uh, you save a lot of money. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And time. The next topic is start to think of the processes that will be used in, in, in production and of the materials that, that, that will be used. And especially the maybe the least mature processes, the processes most likely to cause issues and make a list of the, of, of, of the associated risks and think about how to address that. Does that make sense? It does. And a lot of these have to do with brand new materials that are custom to your design of processes that are custom customized and no one else has done it uh, in their product in the industry. So you're doing it for the first time. So those are the high risk elements in your design that you need to pay attention. Oh, definitely. Yeah. When it comes to manual processes, so the previous point was about fabrication processes of part. This is more about things that uh, operators do, typically assembly and packing, for example. Can you uh, think of ways to error-proof, meaning to make it impossible to make certain mistakes, right? Put the parts in the wrong uh, orientation and so on. Uh, and in some cases, uh, maybe a, a fixture can help keep things in, in uh, aligned and in place and, and people can do their job in a much uh, easier way. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, and I think a, a good example of error proofing, mistake proofing or designing for quality is something like a plug, you know, with a polarity that there's only one way you can plug to the wall. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you will have, if you couldn't uh, only plug it one way, you'll have all kinds of issues in terms of liability, safety. And so those are the types of uh, uh, improvement that you need to do in, in quality design, making, keeping in mind that how can I make this design uh, safe, fail, fail safe as well, and also easy to uh, assemble and, and uh, use at the end. 
Absolutely. The next one is when it comes to complex fabrication processes, um, for some of the parts, you need to try and understand the process window. And um, basically, um, if it's very hard for the manufacturer to make your parts exactly as you want them to be made, well, that is likely to be called a design defect because the design makes it nearly impossible or sometimes impossible to do the right job um, you know, every time for the manufacturer. Uh, have you seen cases like this? Yeah, I think that that's a good point. I mean, uh, if, you, if you're designing a part that uh, is going to require a very complex tooling uh, that is going to take six to eight weeks to build, and then all of a sudden you realize that the tolerances are uh, too narrow and small wear out in the tool is going to cause uh, the parts not to be able to fit together. So that, that, that is going to be an issue. Uh, and it could cost not only six, eight weeks of time because you have to retool for new design, but also, uh, you know, for example, in the case of tooling, it's very, very expensive to do these things. So I think it's very important right up front, you create a design that has some tolerances that are acceptable design guidelines, uh, you know, per industry. And, and this way you don't run into those kind of issues. Yep, good overview, thanks. Uh, the next one, and we're going to go a little bit faster to make sure the video doesn't get too long, uh, is the tolerance analysis. So make sure you um, you think of the tolerances on, on, on the mechanical parts uh, when you, you do the drawings. Uh, make sure that um, they will fit together the right way, that together, even if the tolerances are all of them in the positive side or the negative side, uh, they will still be uh, okay in the end. And I'm going to go straight to the next one is uh, testability. Um, if possible, and that's more and more common with electronic products, uh, make it easy, as easy as possible to actually test uh, if, you know, how the product works or what doesn't work. Do, do you want, do you have something to, to add to this point? No, I think that the, you, you just said it. So the most important thing on the testability, you need to keep in mind what kind of a jigs and the tools are needed in, in the production environment, how much they're going to cost, is it actually easy to build these uh, test and test jigs, otherwise you're going to, you're not going to be able to have a fail safe uh, assembly. Right, yes, the jigs themselves and then uh, what we see more and more is even inside the product itself. Um, okay, well, thanks a lot, Andrew. Uh, I hope that was helpful to uh, the people watching the video. Thank you and see you in the next video. My pleasure.